Hello, I'm Joe DeWolf, and you're watching Expose. It is September 15, 2017 at 10.45 p.m. And I'm going to try to bring two things together here that happened in the days of the, the first temple and the Ark of the Covenant and the placement of the cherubim on the ark meant God's favor for was happy with the Jews or upset with the Jews describe how the cherubim looked at each other although they were made out of gold they they were cherubim and they were alive keep in mind they never looked at the ark of the covenant they never look. That's why their wings always block their view between them and the Ark of the Covenant. Even they would be struck down. Anyway, let me get into that story, and then I'm going to move into our story today and how it kind of looks and resembles their story in that day. And that declares the beginning from the end, more or less. So, below the falling away, there was, you know, when God finally kind of turned on, turned his back, didn't turn on him, turned his back to the Jews because he had to start dealing with a church. This is 2,000 years ago. But prior to that, it was on and off with the Jews and with God. But it was always the Jews turning their back, not God. So let me say here, uh, Ark of the Covenant is and always have been since the first temple in one place, hidden away. Solomon had the temple built. Solomon had many the number is unknown. Chambers built under the temple. Four levels down and perhaps more, but they were hidden chambers. Josiah, this is King David's son, had the insight and saw that the first temple was going to be destroyed. So 35 years prior to the destruction of the first temple, Josiah moved the Ark of the Covenant into a hidden chamber that Solomon had built, where it remains today. During that time, no one knew it was moved because a replica was built in its place. That happened. Now, I may, I may have told you uh, uh, pretty much, but let me tell you about, um, it is several hundred feet. Now, it, it's saying it's under Solomon's temple, but it's also in Temple Mount. But keep in mind, Jesus said not one rock would stand upon the other, that that temple would fall, and it did 70 A.D. Well, if one rock was not standing up upon the other, then why is there a wall of the foundation still standing in place? Because that's the wrong location of the temple. Solomon's temple was in the city of David, the old city of David. So it stands just hundreds of feet away from where the Dome of the Rock and the Temple Mount is. And a lot of people still believe that it's in the old city of David, and I do too. I'm one of those that believe that. Now, it doesn't mean that Solomon's temple didn't spread a large area. It probably did. So, and he, and Josiah was a righteous king, by the way, and he was a good king, king of the Jews, and he, again, foresaw the destruction of the temple, so he moved it 35 years prior to the destruction, and it's never been removed from its place since that time. It still sits in that very chamber today. So all these people that are looking at mud holes on 
so-and-so island out here off of Maine and Newfoundland and these places, it's not in a mud hole, guys. It's where it's always been, and I have always said that. And um, But you had the two cherubim that sat on top of the Ark of the Covenant, and, and they would fold their wings in ways that blocked their view from the Ark of the Covenant. It would kill them as well. But if they were, their wings were overlapping, male and female is what it was, that meant, and they were looking at each other, it meant God was happy with the Jews. If the cherubim sitting on top of the Ark of the Covenant had their wings not overlapping each other like they're hugging, but still blocking their view from the temple and looking, I mean, the ark and looking away from it, God was unhappy with the Jews. And this ark of the covenant was used many times in wars that Israel won or that Jews won. A lot of them, it was used just by carrying it to the war like the walls of Jericho, Ark of the Covenant was sitting there when the walls fell. It was the power that was in it. But I want to go to another place and tell you something else, and, and I hope I can find it quickly. January 10, 1963, Congressman Albert S. Herlong, Jr. of Florida, read a list of 45 communist goes into the congressional record, number 17 read, get control of the schools, use them as transmission belts for socialism and current communist propaganda. Put the party lines in textbooks. Number 27 and 29 were infiltrate the churches and place and replace revealed religions with social religion, discredit the Bible, and emphasize the need of intellectual maturity, which does not need a religious crutch. Eliminate prayer or any phrase of religious expression in the schools on the grounds that it violates the principle of separation of church and state. Discredit the American Constitution by calling it inadequate, old-fashioned, out of step with modern needs, a hindrance to cooperation between nations on a worldwide basis. That's the steps, guys, to bring our country into communist views. And, and we're doing that. We've done that. Now, there's another one I got to read. I got to find it. And um, and I, I want to get there because it's important. And I may I may have gone to the wrong place already, and I really hate that. Um, all right, it's not there. Let me go here. I'm, I apologize. This has got to be it. All right, come on, light up. here we go. Here we go. Now, without a rapture, humankind has no hope. It's divided, it, well, I take, take that back. It is, is written in a read out in 1963, divide and conquer. The last president was supposed to end racism. That was Obama. He did not. He further divided this country. He divided lines. Blue lives matter. Black lives matter. He did that. You have LGBT, you have transgender, feminist, environmentalist, liberal, broken establishment. America was built on the coming together as one, but now it is the many who are dividing our nation that is using the divide and conquer is their more or less motto today. That's what the Illuminati set up, set in place for the United States, and it worked. So if you don't have anything to look for, and when I talk about anything, do you have a future that you're looking to in hopes that things will improve? Forget it. It's not going to happen. 
the only future and hope that you have for you and for your family is the rapture of the church. That's the only future left for this world, not just the United States, but for this world. God will finish dealing with the church and remove the church and then turn his attention back to Israel where he will finish bringing them in. We're in and we're going to be taken out because time is running out and the only hope man has today, the only hope is looking forward to a rapture ending the pain and suffering that's going through today and that's going to really get much, much worse in the near future. Remember that. God is going to deal with the church and finish with the church. Jesus will call us up and then Jesus will turn his attention to Israel. Jody Wolf, Exposed.